On this episode of Delivering Marketing Joy, I talk with Matt Kaspari about technology, giving back, and people he admires. Hey there, and welcome to another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host, Kirby Hossaman, and alongside me today is my main man, Matt Kaspari. He's kind of the head guy in charge of Caspo, right, Matt? Yes, sir. All That's right. the Babel, though, the guy in charge, but yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, I was doing a little research about you and doing getting ready for this, Matt, and I know that you've been in the promo industry for a lot of your life, right? And so what's the biggest impact technology has had on your business and how do you think our industry is going to continue to evolve in advances of technology? Um, yeah, so I think, I mean, you know, starting the company as a, as a 20 year old, and I guess a lot of people would think I, I should be super tech savvy, which is not one of my strengths. So as you can see, uh, the Skype call, I'm struggling, but, <laughs> but technology has served us very well. Um, you know, we, we started off running everything through Excel spreadsheets. Um, and then we kind of evolved into using some order processing software that, we, you know, it's a little bit clunky. Um, I thought it was, I thought we were less efficient with, with the technology. So, um, and now we're, I feel like we're the most dialed in that we've been. Um, we use Salesforce for our CRM and workflow management. And we also use Trello to help kind of keep track of everything. So we have, you know, one of the, you know, I think one of the most more expensive softwares that are out there. Um, and then we also have a free software. Uh, so, and also Excel has come back to help us manage um, some of our finances. I can get P&Ls a lot quicker. So, so yeah, I feel um, technology on that side of the order processing and workflow management has been instrumental to us to be able to manage orders um, a lot faster. So that way we can go sell more. That's yeah. That's and that's the idea, right? As you I always say, you're not making money unless you're doing something in front of your client. So that makes sense. Yep. So the other thing I know about you is you're involved in a lot of organizations. Uh, I know you're involved with PPAI, which is a nonprofit in our industry, uh, Promo Kitchen. And as I, if I understand correctly, you're involved in some nonprofits in your town as well. Why do you spend time on those? What what benefits do you see? whether it's from 10,000 feet or whether it's specific? Yeah, I, you know, that question, I get asked sometimes different forms of it, but I guess, um, you know, when I think about giving back, it's in my DNA. Mm -hmm. I believe, I believe we're here to, to serve one another and help one another. And, you know, not, not so much from a religious standpoint, but just from, you know, we're all part of the human race and the more we can lend a hand and help each other out, um, I think the better off we all are. Mm. So, you know, if I look at our industry and look at being a part of Promo Kitchen or the some of the councils and, and committees on PPAI, um, I do it because I, I, I believe in serving and serving for the greater good. And I also, if, if I was to look at, so that's maybe altruistic, but internally, um, I get a lot of value out of that. Mm. Um, personally, professionally, um, you know, you know, I've, I've mentored, I've sat on boards. So sometimes, you know, we've looked at that as a company. I haven't been quite as strategic maybe as we could have been with my volunteer efforts, but I take it more from a perspective of, you know, what's important to me. So um, I, I've identified youth empowerment as well as mentorship. So I, I think those are really, really nice fits for my own DNA. Cool. No, it's really good. And I, I think that's, you're an inspiration in that way, Matt. So I appreciate the service that you do. So, Final question for you. Um, who are some people that you admire in business and why? I, I love that question. I, you know, I can think of, um, you know, besides Kirby, um, there, there's some, <laughs> I, you know, I, it was that question. I, I enjoyed my uncle as a mentor of mine. Um, I worked for him since I was 12 and that, he was in the recognition side of our business. So um, I've, I've been around it even longer than when I started my company. So uh, just kind of seeing how, um, and his passion and being unique and being different, um, has been something that, that I've always looked, 
looked up to it and said, you know, I can do this myself. I can do that as well. You know, I want to be unique. I think we're humans. We're all different. So bringing that aspect to, to what we do is awesome. And, um, I, you know, I think of, you know, Danny Rosen or Paul Kiwi, people like that, that, you know, I, I think a little bit of evangelists or people that are, you know, thinking outside the box and just having a good time. You know, they're not, you know, you can be buttoned up when you need to be, but we're not doing heart surgery. And, you know, although I could have went into that field, maybe, um, I, I didn't for a reason because that's serious. You got life on your hands. So, um, you know, I just think of people that are themselves and that exercise their creative spirit. That those are people I look up to. And then lastly, um, honesty and integrity. I mean, people that, mm. you know, have a high level of, of consciousness, but also care for others. Mm, man, great stuff. That's uh, good qualifications. And uh, I certainly agree with some of the names you mentioned there. That's good, good stuff there, Matt. Well, hey, you've answered my three questions. I give everybody the opportunity to ask me one question. So do you have one for me? I do. And uh, I hope it'll make sense because I know sometimes I talk and it doesn't make sense um, <laughs> to the outside world. But when I, when I was thinking about this, um, you know, I wanted to ask you a question that would take some thought on your end. And um, so with not having very much time to think about it, let me ask you this. So someone who, you know, you run a small business, our industry is comprised of mostly small businesses. Um, I run one myself. And so, you know, I, I, I see you, you're, you know, great husband, good family man, uh, take care of your employees. So I just wonder, and then in, Amongst all of that, you know, finding time to create so much content that you do that helps further our industry, you know, just kind of how do you do it or what drives you? Kind of two questions in one, I guess. No, that's great. It's a great question. You know, I, I really appreciate that the idea that you think I am a great husband and father. I, I really think that I would probably ask my wife <laughs> whether well, I know she your agrees. Wife, so I... <laughs> but I appreciate that the, the kind words. Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think that I have always sort of been an entrepreneur. I've always wanted, you know, when I was a kid, I remember the story. Uh, actually, somebody just brought it up the other day. I was giving a talk on being an entrepreneur to junior high kids. And somebody in the audience was a mentor. And they said, oh, I remember when you started your bike repair business when you were like 10. And I, I laughed about it. And she, she's like, I was a customer. And I said, that's really cool. I said, and you get that like, I realized halfway into it that I didn't know how to repair bikes at all. <laughs> like I didn't have a clue. But what I did find out is I could sell, right? And so um, I've kind of <laughs> always been a bit of an entrepreneur. And the content side, I've really, you know, obviously, as you know, I've kind of doubled down on that because I think it's, I think it's the right strategy. And so I, I was talking to our buddy Mark Graham about this the other day. And, you know, he was like, you know, why do you do it? And I'm like, I think it's the right thing. So if I think it's the right thing, if I don't do it, it's irresponsible for my business, right? Okay. It's like you, you, if you said, well, you know, you need to make cold calling. Well, I just, I, I just don't have time to do that. And that's how I feel when people say they don't have time to do social media or content. Well, the, I just – my response is then you don't believe it because <laughs> if you believed yeah. it, then obviously you'd make time because you'd be like, oh, well, there's money behind it. And so – um, it's something I am pretty passionate about. I enjoy doing, I enjoy getting to talk to people like you. And so I guess that's my answer is I, I enjoy getting up every day. I like growing a business. I like working with the people I do and, and, uh, like getting to talk to people like you. So, uh, it's pretty, pretty fun gig. <laughs> well, that's, that's awesome. And, and with your words, with the answer to that, you know, it lights a little fire underneath my own self just because of, uh, like you said, if something's important, you make time. There's no excuse. Um, you make time for it. So, well, I appreciate that. Well, cool, man. You did an awesome job, Matt, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time. We'll have to do it again sometime, okay? Thank you, Kirby. Have All a great right. weekend. Yeah, and that wraps up another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, but wait. Can you do me a favor? Please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done it already, the way to do it is right over here. And hey, if you want to watch the last episode, check that out over here. Again, before you leave, subscribe.